has the most beautiful, handsome, youthful appearance. In fact, his body is made of pure transcendental bliss. So who would not want to contact Krishna in devotional service? This is called Madhava. Madhu means sweet. Huh? So he who is the source of all sweetness is Madhava. And the next words, Kunja Bihari. Kunja Bihari means uh, one who lives in the forest in beautiful groves. Kunjas are like artistically landscaped and uh, uh, handmade beautiful groves in the forest. This art is almost lost. We don't, we don't see these things in the Western world, but in India there are some gardens where they have actually kunjas, and they're very, very beautiful. They're planted with flowers that bloom different times of the year. Of course, in the spiritual world, they bloom all the time. <laughs> so there's different fruits and flowers in these kunjas and there's all comforts there, you know, like places to sit, places to eat, um, rooms and little uh, temples for uh, the meeting of Krishna and his devotees. So he's always staying in there, Bihari. He's staying in the forest. Bihari, Bihar means forest and also Hari means lion. So the lion lives in the forest and enjoys all his pastimes there. So Krishna is Bihari. He's the lion of the forest of Vrindavan and he lives in the Kunjas. He's always having pastimes with his intimate devotees in the groves, beautifully landscaped groves of the Vrindavan forest. Then, uh, then Jai Gopi Jana Balava. So gopis are the transcendental milkmaids of Vrindavan. They take care of the cows, just like the gopas are the cowherd boys. The gopis are the female cowherd uh, ladies. And uh, he's gopi jana. Huh? He's the property of these, of these gopis. He's their man, gopi jana. Jana means man. Uh, so uh, just like, uh, well, it's not so nice. Uh, it, but in the, in the West, the prostitutes refer to their clients as Johns. Uh, jana means man. Uh, so this, this word has been coming down in slang, if not in a proper language. But anyway, um, Gopi Jana means that he's the man of the gopis. He belongs to them. He's their property. He is always associating with gopis. He takes all kinds of service from them in his uh, pastime form, in his original form as Krishna. And uh, Vala, uh, <laughs> Vala is a funny word. It's a, it's a slang word in, in uh, Brijbas, the language of, of uh, Braja. And uh, Vala kind of means, <laughs> it's, like, it's like a guy, you know? <laughs> like we say, oh yeah, so-and-so is a guy who does this and that. So what kind of a guy is Krishna? Gopi Jana. <laughs> He's a Gopi Jana guy. <laughs> He's always joking and laughing and, and dancing and playing music with the Gopis. And, and uh, they entertain him and he entertains them in many different ways. It's a beautiful lifestyle. When I first read about Krishna's pastimes with the Gopis, I said, yes. This is the way I want to live. Huh? It doesn't matter whether this is, uh, to me, you know, when people would challenge my faith, they would say, well, what if, what if some guys in India just made up all this stuff, you know? What if it's just a poetry and it doesn't really have any factual meaning? I'd say, well, fine, I don't care. Because these values are the most beautiful values in the world. This way of life, this kind of society, these uh, natural spiritual values are actually the way that people should be living. And uh, regardless of whether it's historically, factually true, uh, of course it actually is true, but uh, even if it isn't true, it wouldn't make any difference to me. I would still want to live according to these values. And that's why our community is based on this. 
living out in the forest, living a, a natural life, in a pure place, and all that. These are values that should be important to each and every one of us. Because if people all over the world lived like this, we wouldn't have the problems with the environment. We wouldn't have problems with pollution. We wouldn't have problems with crime. We wouldn't have problems with politics. Uh, because we would just be living out in the woods very simply and enjoying life. Huh? There wouldn't be all these crazy problems. It's only because of people's greed. So if we were all like Gopi Jana Balava, if we all lived like that, there wouldn't be any problems in this world. Girivara Dhari. Girivara means uh, he holds up the Govardhan hill. The story is there was supposed to be a big uh, sacrifice for Indra. Indra controls the weather. He's the king of the heavenly planets, and so he controls the clouds, the weather, the rain, stuff like that. So anyway, Krishna went to his father and said, you know, actually, we shouldn't worship Indra. We should worship Govardhan Hill instead. Huh? Govardhan Hill is known as Giri. So uh, they performed this big ceremony using the ingredients that were supposed to be offered to Indra. They worship Govardhan Hill instead. And this is now a big holiday among Vaishnavas in India called Govardhan Puja. So Govardhan Puja, uh, they offer literally a, a hill of grains. And then everybody has a big feast and it's very wonderful. Uh, but anyway, Lord Indra became disturbed. Why aren't they worshipping me? What's wrong with these cowherd people? Don't they understand how great I am? So he, he sent his, his rain cloud called the Samvartaka cloud that uh, he uses at the time of universal devastation. And uh, it was flooding uh, Braja, uh, Vrindavan, with water. So Krishna held up the Govardhan hill on his little finger for seven days continuously and sheltered all the inhabitants of Vrindavan under Giri Govardhan. So he's known as Giri Varadhari, the lifter of Govardhan Hill. Uh, and Jai Jashoda Nandana. Jashoda Nandana means the son of Mother Yashoda. Mother Jashoda is uh, a tremendously important figure in, in Krishna's pastimes. Mother Yashoda, well, she's his mother. <laughs> so sometimes uh, she cooks for him, she dresses him, puts him to bed, comforts him in various ways, and then serves him in so many ways, it's just innumerable ways. And um, she also sometimes chastises him uh, when he's bad, which is often. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, because she's his mother, and that's what mothers do, right? They make sure their kids grow up and... Uh, don't steal the neighbor's yogurt and stuff like that. <laughs> but he does it anyway. Uh, anyway, when Krishna does these things, it's beautiful and it's a source of joy because actually everything belongs to him anyway. So he can take the yogurt and feed it to the monkeys. It's all right. You know, he can take the butter and throw it all over the place. It doesn't matter. It's all his anyway. So uh, these are all pastimes in the spiritual world. Actually, nobody is Krishna's mother. Uh, Krishna is self-manifest. Krishna's original form is the source of all other forms, all other energies, and all other things expand from him. Uh, so uh, if even his devotees are his energy, then how is it that some of them play the role of his mother? Well, this is Krishna's inconceivable pastimes. Uh, sometimes some of his uh, devotees become his mother, his father, and various other superiors, and he offers them worship and respect, just like uh, that one should treat one's parents. And so Mother Yashoda, he's known as the darling of Mother Yashoda, Yashoda Nandana. Uh, Brajajana Ranjana. Brajajana means the inhabitants of Vrindavan, the inhabitants of Krishna's uh, abode. And uh, Ranjana, he gives them pleasure. Uh, Krishna is always engaged in pastimes of pleasure with his different devotees. He has innumerable devotees in Goloka Vrindavan. 
and he expands himself into innumerable forms to be with them and play with them in different pastimes according to their particular mood of worship. So in Vrindavan there are four moods of worship, servitude, friendship, parenthood, and conjugal love. And the gopis are in conjugal love with the Lord. And then Mother Yashoda, Nanda Maharaj, and other older members are like in a parental role. And then there's many, many friends. He has innumerable cowherd boyfriends. And then there's many servants also, that, uh, including all the plants and animals in the forest of Vrindavan. They're all Krishna's servants. And they all provide different services for his ecstatic pastimes. So Krishna is totally ecstatic. Uh, I don't know, I mean, I'm not a very good artist, you know, I can't draw, but when I see these pictures of Krishna, you know, he's like, 